All right, picking up where we left off, this is part three of chapter six, learning. Now we're going to discuss biological preparedness. Psychologist Martin Seligman argued that animals are genetically programmed to fear specific objects. For us, it might be snakes, fire, and heights. People are predisposed to wariness of outgroup members. Animals have evolved to be able to detect threats. Thus, we will quickly be able to see the snake in this group of images, and we will have a harder time detecting the flowers in this group. In both cases, the snakes grab our attention. Learning involves expectancies and prediction. Classical conditioning is a way that animals come to predict the occurrence of events that prompted psychologists to try to understand the mental processes that underlie conditioning. Robert Lascorla argued that for learning to take place, the conditioned stimulus must accurately predict the unconditioned stimulus. In the Lascorla Wagner model, a conditioned a cognitive model of classical conditioning. It holds that the strength of the conditioned stimulus, unconditioned stimulus association is determined by the extent to which the unconditioned stimulus is unexpected or surprising. In other words, this means that some predictors are better than others. Some predictions aren't correct. In prediction error, the difference between the is the difference between the expected and actual outcomes. A positive prediction error strengthens the association between the stimuli. A negative prediction error weakens that condition, er, weakens that relationship. The Rascorla Wagner model of learning emphasizes prediction error. Here a dog associates the sound of an electric can opener with the arrival of food. With the substitution of a manual can opener for the electric one, the dog is initially surprised. What happened to the reliable predictor of the dog's food? This prediction error causes the dog to check the environment for a new stimulus. When the dog comes to associate the manual can opener with the arrival of food, the new stimulus has become a better predictor of the expected event. Time to eat. And dopamine plays a role in this, if you remember, that is a neurotransmitter produced in the brain. Dopamine and pr prediction, error. prediction error. When biological mechanisms are in effect, what biological mechanisms are in effect during such learning? Researchers examined how dopamine neurons respond during conditioning. Prediction error signals alert us to important events in the environment. Researchers have recently found support for the error prediction model using optogenetics. By using optogenetics to activate dopamine neurons, researchers actually overcame the blocking effect. Dopamine activity in the brain signals the receipt of a reward. The blue line clearly shows the spike in dopamine activity. This activity resulted from a positive prediction error after the unexpected arrival of the unconditioned stimulus. Once the unconditioned stimulus was associated with the conditioned stimulus, the spike in dopamine activity occurred after the arrival of the conditioned stimulus, but not after the arrival of the expected unconditioned stimulus. Dopamine activity continued after the arrival of the conditioned stimulus. However, once the unconditioned stimulus no longer appeared, a negative prediction error resulted in decreased dopamine activity. Phobias and addictions have learned components. Classical conditioning helps explain many behavioral phenomena. Among the examples are phobias and addictions. A phobia is an acquired fear out of proportion to the real threat of an object or of a situation. It involves fear conditioning. 
the process of classically conditioning animals to fear neutral objects. The responses include specific physiological and behavioral reactions. It also involves freezing. It may be a hardwired response to fear that helps animals deal with predators. All right, now we're going to look at phobias in terms of the case study of Little Albert. In 1919, J.B. Watson became one of the first researchers to demonstrate the role of classical conditioning in the development of phobias by devising the Little Albert case study. At the time, the prominent theory of phobias was based on Freudian ideas about unconscious, repressed sexual desires. Watson proposed that phobias could be explained by simple learning principles, such as classical conditioning. Little Albert, who was 11 months old, was presented with neutral objects, a white rat, rabbit, dog, and costume masks that provoked a neutral response. During conditioning trials, when Albert reached for the white rat, a conditioned stimulus, a loud clanging sound, the unconditioned stimulus, scared him, which is the unconditioned response. The results? Eventually, the pairing of the rat, or conditioned stimulus, and the clanging sound, or unconditioned stimulus, led to the rat's producing fear, a conditioned response, on its own. The fear response generalized to other stimuli presented with the rat, initially, such as the costume masks. Conclusion? Classical conditioning can cause people to fear neutral objects. Watson planned to conduct extinction trials to remove the learned phobias, but Albert's mother removed the child from the study. Was this type of research ethical? Short answer, no, it is not. The child did not have the ability to give permission for this to happen. Watson's colleague, Mary Cover Jones, used classical conditioning techniques to develop effective behavioral therapies to treat phobias in a three-year-old. In what is called counter-conditioning, one exposing a patient to small doses of a feared stimuli while he or she engages in an enjoyable task. Think of it as deprogramming. All right, here's a picture of the situation. In Watson's experiment, little Albert was presented with a neutral object, if you remember, a white rat, that provoked a neutral response. Albert learned to associate the rat with a loud clanging sound that scared him. Eventually, he showed the conditioned fear response when he saw the previously neutral rat. The fear response generalized to other stimuli presented with the rat, such as costume masks. And looking at that picture, that costume mask would probably elicit fear in some other people over time as well. All right, and we mentioned drug addiction earlier at the beginning of this section. Classical conditioning also plays an important role in drug addiction. Environmental cues associated with drug use can induce conditioned cravings. Unsatisfied cravings may result in withdrawal, an unpleasant state of tension and anxiety, coupled with changes in heart rate and blood pressure. The side of drug cues leads to activation of the prefrontal cortex in various regions of the limbic system and produces an expectation that the drug high will follow. Psychologist Shepard Siegel believed exposing addicts to drug cues was an important part of treating addiction. He believed exposure helped extinguish responses to the cues and prevents them from triggering cravings. Siegel and his colleagues conducted research into the relationship between drug tolerance and situation. The body has learned to expect the drug in that location and compensates by altering neurochemistry and physiology to metabolize it. Conversely, if addicts take their usual large dose in novel settings, 
they are more likely to overdose because their bodies have not, will not respond sufficiently to compensate. All right, and that concludes part three, chapter six.